Hey everybody, Charlie here. Welcome back to Perospera in what is going to be the start of our transition into actually having terraformed uh, a terraformed Mars, okay? It's gonna be amazing. Now, you're gonna notice a couple of things. I've been letting it run for quite a while, okay? So I wanna just give you a brief recap of some of the stuff I've done in the meantime. We've got a couple of research sites set up up here, right near where the water still is. We've got this outpost, which is gonna go ahead and give us the research here and the output for the uh, Tianwen One Lander. It's gonna be done in uh, about 22 souls. We've also got the Viking Two Lander, it's going to need it's 89 souls to properly generate it, but it just needs the food delivered and then it can start working. And then, of course, we've got we've got uh, people at these sites, too. I'm working my way out with worker hubs and, you know, solar farms, and all that stuff to get to this. And this is the last research outpost I want to get before we really start hitting terraforming. OK, it's the last one. Uh, Tianwen One Lander Research Outpost. Let's go ahead and read this one. Um, this is by Mission Commander Breck Lackey. Uh, it says, Torben's sharp eyes spotted the uh, Tianwen-1 lander in the large plains of Utopia. The spacecraft was left in very poor condition. Like many missions from the robotic era, Tianwen-1 aimed to profile the composition of the Martian soil. It's amazing how much we've learned since then and how much we don't know yet. It's very important that people understand and realize just how much they don't know yet. Just as much as it is learning you know you, you, the, the most intelligent people the most uh wise people thoroughly understand that they don't know everything right which is pretty nice okay so a couple of things have happened one space elevator let's take a look at it where did it go right let's repair satellite space elevator okay the space elevator has been done i have one available okay uh, I've done all the launches necessary to do it. It's a pretty big drain on resources, but you can see we've, uh, you know, we're not necessarily, you know, short on the, the, the finished resources, the processed resources. We've got lots of those in storage. And we're only going to get more in storage now, too, because I've been dropping storage units. We're going to drop some more here, too. Let's get another storage center. Um, kind of been sort of crowding the uh, hyper loops with these storage centers. They're building a whole bunch of them because when we break down all these things, that the resources that we get back for breaking that stuff down, right? We're gonna we're gonna want to be able to store that somewhere, and so I've got. Uh, oh come on, where did it go? Don't do it to me. Quit it. There's like a one specific spot it wants to be. Now I'm now I'm just being stubborn. I'm just like you will go here. There you go. Uh, so I've got Hyperloop set up throughout this whole area, too. And there's a, that's a lot of cost, right? There's a lot of time and cost involved in that. But it's allowing resources to move significantly faster. And that also means resources to move out of the area significantly faster as well. Uh, although there is an extent. There is to, only to some extent. Because, I mean, obviously, once we break all this stuff down, which will be fast. I also need to break down the Hyperloop and then carry it back. Now, the drones... We've got almost 500 workers, uh, going on 500 workers, but the drones are only really going to hang out near their hubs, right? So as we move this stuff back and break down these hubs, we're going to need to start replacing these drone hubs as we move them back, unless we want this process to go even slower. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but I think to break these down really fast, we're going to need to make sure that we have even more buildings on the way back. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, so, like, for example, I should put a couple of these over here. Um, this hub can probably go right here. And, and just just kind of nonsensical places. But it's going to help more workers to be in the area to break the stuff down how it needs to be. And then the stuff gets sent to the Hyperloop. And stuff gets uh, then moved over towards storage facilities where it can be stored. So this one here, for example, this carbon mine's done. Uh, this one here, for example, right? We've got like four or five. What, one, two, three, four. I probably could use a fifth over here, actually, uh, of these storage facilities to make sure that we can keep that stuff nearby. And it can be transported to the Hyperloop and got into the network uh, really, really quickly. Go ahead and break down this mine, too. 
So as we move and start this process, we're going to want to get the ones that are in the darkest places first. And that, of course, means this, which is why I'm waiting for these research sources to be done before I start this process, because I want I want this one and then that's it. I'm not going to wait for the other one. But then as we move, right, we're, we're going to lose our ability to get this abandoned Martian dome and this starship docking platform, this abandoned botanic dome. This stuff is just going to go. We're not going to have the ability to get that stuff. It's too far away. It's in sectors that are blocked and it's in the well, it's in the flood zone like way deep. But I'm hoping that we can get this stuff at least. Now, to get into SA6, I've been told in the comments that it's all about... It doesn't list it here anymore. But it's all about getting the oxygen, the O2 bar fill, filled. Uh, and, then, and then it will progress you. So I have these two oxygen sources here. These oxygen release plants. I've got these two things working. I know it's not really going to do a whole lot. And it looks like the output is zero which is interesting but I do see this going up now it's 0.1 millibar maybe that's not going up I don't know maybe it's not once I start building these biodomes we can spread plant life across Mars won't that be nice uh, I'm also looking at like where do I want to put the space elevator right and uh, I mean part of me wants to put it near I guess ground zero if you will wants to put it near the original site but another part of me wonders if there is a strategic point that is more advantageous for me. Like, perhaps, uh, obviously, we I, I think it's obvious anyway, we want to put it near a Hyperloop. Um, if I was to place the, the elevator, like, over here, needs equatorial strip. Ah, okay, so you have to put it near the equator. Fair enough. All right, well, in that case... Uh, which makes absolute sense. Um, I just, I guess I just didn't think of it as I was placing it. Um, well, we have a Hyperloop right here. And as long as this isn't a flood zone, we could totally get away with it being over here. So it looks like this is not a floodable area. It would tell me if it is. Yep, flood zone, not floodable. Okay, so this right here seems like a decent spot for this. So I'm going to go ahead and plop this down right here, I think. Man, it looks like it's in a flood zone though, isn't it? With like... It's being lower elevation and stuff. Doesn't it look like it's going to be? Eh. I don't want it to be too close to that dome, though. I think I'm I, I think I'm going to set it over. Can you let me do it over here? Not doesn't count as equatorial strip. OK, well, in that case, yeah, I think we'll we'll go ahead and just give in and put it right here. So the space elevator is going down and looks to me like the thing just instantly builds. Look at the size and scale of this. Like, assuming that all these little structures are where people would be, right? Like, tiny people would be all, the, all down in here. This thing is enormous. The space elevator. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, it just goes way, way up, you know? My God. <laughs> what have I done? I've made a space elevator. That's cool. Uh, all right, so there's that. And, uh, you know, we also have access to nitrates now. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I, I briefly skimmed over it where you can kind of see it, but it's over... Where'd it go? I think it's over here somewhere. That's silicon over in this area, right here. We've got nitrates, all right? We've unlocked that research now, too. Oh, hang on. Viking 2 Lander Expedition Log. Volcanologist, Dr. Juniper Clark. If only your name was Jupiter instead. Uh, it took us longer than expected to find the Viking 2 Lander. We had to do frequent position checks to not stray from our initial path. Almost as if the planet didn't want us to find it. This tiny old spacecraft conducted bio biology experiments to look for life on Mars. 200 years later, we still don't have an answer. Unfortunately... Viking 2's batteries failed after eight uh, after 1281 souls, 1,281 souls, and it turned off on April 1980. So I think maybe it's part of terraforming, actually. Yeah, nuclear nitrate extractor. This is going to put nitrogen in the atmosphere, which is super important. So we're going to put that in there, uh, and and we're going to get that started pretty quickly, because right now our atmosphere is almost entirely CO2, not exactly productive. We're going to be converting a lot of it into oxygen, but in order for us to have a good balance, we're going to need plenty of nit nitrogen. 
I'm just waiting for these two things to get built now. Hopefully that doesn't take super long. Honestly, I don't think I need this maintenance center, actually. I'm going to go ahead and have that just canceled. Because by the time we need, like, any of this stuff to be maintained, we'll be breaking it down. Like, we're going to be breaking this stuff down very shortly. So, uh, forget about that. What else do we need? Uh, we're still getting lots of water extraction and... You know, like it's it's great, and there's uh there's there's still lots of water in this area. I don't know if this this is gonna flood pretty quickly, and I don't really know if I want to build a building there necessarily, but any little bit of water helps, right? So if we can get even the slightest bit of water out of this, we should try our best to exploit it. So I'm just gonna drop that stuff down too, and this video is gonna cut quite a bit because there's gonna be a lot of playtime in the process of this. So, I mean, this this video is going to expand probably several hours of playtime. Just to kind of speed this up just a little bit for you guys. So, uh, nitrate extraction. I'm going to pop you there. And then another one here. Let's start getting nitrogen added to the atmosphere, too. Uh, more nitrates come in right over here. Oh, too close. Okay, no problem. We'll do it this one. There we go. And there's lots of these. There's lots of nitrates right here, too. Uh, another one. It's like 2,000 nitrates on that one. So as this stuff starts to go, we should see our composition go start going up. We have 0.1% uh, N2 now. And we should see that go up pretty rapidly. Uh, so we're almost done here. We've got a little bit. Progress, research outpost. And these guys are arriving before it's even done. I find that to be kind of interesting. How they always They always seem to arrive before these things are done. Like when this one was built, as soon as it completed, the moment it completed, there was already 60 people here. 10, like eight departing, and there was like 60 people here already. But they couldn't perform the research without the facility being done. So like they're here waiting for it to be done. And then each one of these research centers, right, are kicking out tons of, they're kicking out tons of science. It doesn't seem like it's tons of science, but it's 20, 20 RPs, per cycle and it's only 50 populations so you can spread the population you have out amongst all of these and it just all adds up to the point of house having nearly a thousand per month and honestly when i started this video if i had showed you it it was closer to 1500 per month so we were getting a lot per month uh, on this when i first started the video i do want to see what the nitrate extractor looks like because this i i haven't built one yet it's i was waiting until the start of recording to build one and I don't know where I started to build them at. They're over here somewhere. Uh, silicon mine. Where did I put that? Well, I mean, they're spread out all over the place, right? So we just got to find one. I guess I could use... The, I could look at the ones that aren't built yet. But I know there's one operational. I suppose I could go into the building list again, but I don't want to. I'm just going to sound like a child now. I don't want to. My kid started doing that. You know, he's... He's five. And I haven't had any issues with him being like, I want to. I haven't had any of that yet. I thought, I'm blessed to have a kid that doesn't do that. <laughs> it's begun. It's begun. Spoke too soon uh, to myself. I didn't actually speak it out loud, so uh, there's no jinxing there. But I was thinking it. Maybe that counts. They always do say the thought that counts. Bioengineer plants is done. Sweet. So we're going to get started on that. So the engineering tree is completely done. We don't need any more help and research for engineering. Unfortunately, it's, it's sad. I wish the, the biggest thing they need in this game, guys, they need a way for you to like process salt water right and i know a lot of you have said it in comments i 100 percent agree with you it is i i, I don't hey, i see it look 1100 rp per month right now i don't understand what's going through the the minds of developers or whatever the reason they didn't uh have some sort of salt water as a resource that you can collect and then process into actual water it doesn't seem like it would be very difficult at all to do something like that. You simply give me one, you know, put put desalinization or something in here, right? And allow me to put it on the shore 
or I, uh, on the, the borderline where water's going to be. Let me just speed this up a little bit. We're going to do, I think, ice asteroids. I think we're going to do ice asteroids here. Um, it, let me to put it on the on the shore, right? I mean, you already have a mechanic that does that, right? There's If I go to terraforming, you have the uh, is it biodome. No, right here, the aquadome. Right, spawns bioengineered cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria near and nearby oceans. It's something that works with nearby oceans. Let me do the exact same thing, but do it as like a pump. Like, give me a water pump, and that water pump grabs mm. salt water. Importing water will be useful for creating a green planet. Yes. While I can melt the permafrost on Mars for water, arrow breaking an ice asteroid for water gives me more options. However, I should proceed carefully. We may be burying important resources or discoveries underwater. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Thanks, Amy. I've been trying to get all the discoveries. <laughs> all right, so here's here's the plan for this video, right? Because I don't want to sit here and have do nothing, but uh, I am also getting research uh, pretty quickly, actually. Uh, you'll notice, like, we just started this, and it's already way over half done. So like this is gonna this is gonna take no time at all to do and in research especially in the it's already done introduce external water into Mars by guiding an ice asteroid yeah yeah so like these ones right here are gonna be very fast it's this stuff that takes a long time and um, I think the one I'm looking forward to here is import nitrogen from Titan I kind of want to get that going so we can re we can work on the spaceport limit here I think that's probably a good idea I think I'm at my spaceport limit right now I think. <laughs> No, I'm not. Well, that's interesting. Well, we can pick another one. Uh, it's considered a flood zone. Let's make sure we're not going to put it on the flood zone, though. Uh, I can pop one over here, I guess. Yeah. There. And then... Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll put one... I want to keep them near the hyperloops. This ought to do. And then I also think near all the hyperloops, we need to have more storage centers. Um, this one here... I don't think it's it's not near max yet and, and i wish there was a way to tell like how close this was to full without just like looking in here but it can hold a lot all these storage centers can hold a lot of stuff and they don't take all that many resources to build proportionate to what they can hold this one says it had no power that's actually surprising oh there's like this tiny gap in power right there well, that's okay. We'll expand the grid out this way, and we'll uh, make sure we cover that right about here how to do it. It's all connected to the same grid, and we've got fusion now. It's uh, it's pretty big deal. Okay, we got lots of power. We're we got power for for months. Uh, maintenance facility. Honestly, I think we could probably start tearing some of this stuff down. Utopia Colony Dome uh, Dome Research Outpost. That's the one that's at the far. Uh, the far north that I was waiting for. EVA specialist Don A. Stewart. The more we explore this facility, the more obvious the comfort that money can buy, even here on Mars. To say, uh, the stay here at the Utopia Martian Resort as luxurious... Okay, hold on. I swear I can read. The stay here at the Utopian Martian Resorts as luxurious... Okay, that's, it's just worded weird. I, I get it. A Martian Resort is as luxurious, luxurious as the top hotels on Earth. Why was that so hard to say? Despite the complete lack of windows, the guests could have been on Mars or Mexico for all they knew. Aww. Well, that's not, that's not good. I want to know. I want to be able to see outside and see the... No windows? Come on now. Okay, so we can start pulling this stuff. Now, I, I like the idea of using the research for this, but we can start pulling this stuff because it's going to flood first. The other stuff, we can leave it behind. Stuff like Curiosity probably needs to be pulled, but the stuff next to Curiosity doesn't need it. And like uh, for the, So this one here, we could probably start pulling it because we know that this crater is going to flood first. right? We've got this, this sort of deeper uh, here. You can see the height chart right here, right? The closer it is to this dark color, the faster it's going to flood in. There's space four. We can start getting nitrogen rich, rich asteroids. That seems good. And then um, we're looking for like this one can stay. This one can stay. But like all this stuff needs to get start breaking down. So the process of this, and I am going to skip this. So we're about to cut the video here shortly, is to break this down sequentially. I don't want to just mark them all to break them down because they may do them out of order. And that would cut the roads. And then I have to like build something to get the roads connected again. So I'm going to have to break them down sequentially. 
and that's going to take a long time and I'm not going to make you wait for that. But as we sort of work our way into having all of our structures be out of the flood zone, and that does mean this area too. But I'm leaving this water rich area as long as possible because I'm pulling water out of it. You'll notice though that we're about to extract the entire supply. And throughout the course of this process, as I'm doing it, all of these water deposits are going to be pulled out, right? We have level three extractors on all the water sources. We're going to pull all of those out. Uh, I would have loved to have done Pathfinder, but unfortunately, Pathfinder is in a completely different sector, and I can't get that. So um, it looks to me like we're probably not going to be able to get that. Viking 1 Lander, probably not. Unless the story progresses faster than I think it will, um, there's a good chance we probably won't be able to get this abandoned Martian base either. But the rest of these are not in flood zones. This one's like barely. Uh, and then these ones are lost. Right? We're not going to get those. But that's okay. I don't need to get them all, right? I just wanted to get certain ones. I wanted to get a bunch of them, but I don't need to get the, all of them. Um, and then I, I realized that if the story is true, if it's if it's true that the story progresses when I advance oxygen, then just simply putting more oxygen into the atmosphere is all I need to do. And I probably need more oxygen release plants to do that. I would actually like to not do this with water anymore. Because you can see, like, it's, it's, it's pulling our water supply way down to use these to do it, right? It's just direct oxygen. What I would rather have done is to use stuff like the biodome, because it's going to convert the CO2 we already have into oxygen. And we can do that in various places. We could just pop these kind of anywhere. I don't think it really matters where we take them. So, like, these little biodomes here are going to help me do that as well. Uh, I don't want to do it too fast. Um, I'm aware of what happens when you have too oxygen rich. I'm very aware of that. Uh, so we don't want to do it too quickly. But uh, I'm going to also deprioritize the colonies because we're running out of food. And this will also help our water supply just a little bit. Does this mean people will go home? Yes. And that's okay. I'm all right with that. Uh, okay. So let's see about this iron mine going away. Yeah, so I'm going to start breaking this stuff down now. It's it's about time. So I will see you guys on the other side. It's probably going to be hours of gameplay, but it's all condensed into a few seconds for you. Enjoy the video editing magic. See you in a second. All right, arrow break. Nitrogen risk asteroid is done. In introduce external oxygen into Mars by guiding a nitrogen rich asteroid into the atmosphere. I'm just chiming in whenever we get new research. Uh, I'm not showing you gameplay. I'm just going to make sure you guys can see the text, text and stuff for all these different research things that get completed. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I think, now and move towards. Uh, yeah, let's stay. Let's stay in. Let's stay in space. We'll just go down this whole top section and clear it. So, GHG import is going to be stupid fast to do. It probably gets done almost immediately. Well, it'll get done in a month, easy. So, uh, I'm, again, I'm breaking things down, and I'll be with you guys in a second. Actually, like, in, it, actually a second. So, import greenhouse gases from Earth, Earthian skies. We're not scorched in vain. There you go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just... I'm just going to go down this top piece here uh, to clear this tree. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep going. Okay, it says import ice from Europa is done. Uh, import ice from Jupiter's moon in, with a fleet of cargo ships. Ice import is done. Amy also chimed in while that was going and said that Europa is a beautiful moon and that uh, she just needs to carve a little bit of its ice. Nobody would even know it's missing. And I'm sure that anyone or I mean, he, she actually said, I'm sure Europa would love to be part of this wonderful mission. Like, eh, OK, the, the, the moon would like to be part of it. Are you sure? <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to go Comet Collision. I'm just going to clear the, the tech tree for this area, uh, which is going to take a long time over here. But, I mean, like, we're starting to terraform and stuff now. So um, this stuff here will be really nice to have. And then Dimos Collision either. I don't even know if I want to do this. Like, take away like take away the one of Mars's moons? I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I mean, it's cool, but... Uh, do I need to eh, collide one of the moons with the surface to release a massive amount of kinetic energy? Like, I don't know about that. In any case, uh, we're going to go crash comet. And I'm already starting to break this down. We're retracting everything. So I'll be right back. Oh, wow, the game's not leaving me alone, man. Comet collision's already done. Uh, yeah, collide a comet. There it is. Uh, you know, I think instead of the Dimos collision, I'm going to put my time into unlocking the next tier 
uh, of things. And like, I don't really care. I don't think I care so much about the military being better. Uh, at least not right now. Uh, I'm going to unlock this fifth tier at least. So we'll do this. Spaceport limit goes up. And away we go. Okay. So still breaking this down. It's like mere seconds between these research projects. Okay. Just got a research for space five. Groundbreaking space technology. Spaceport limit is now up to 10. And uh, we could probably go ahead and get... Um, I think we'll go ahead and get the magnetic dipole shield. I think I want this. Let's go ahead and grab that. So I am uh, just kind of paying attention to my colonies a little bit. I, I do expect to see the population drop considerably. Uh, I'm also looking at probably deleting entire colonies here and having them all move to crater domes. Uh, so one of the things I'm looking to do, like for example, would be to get rid of this colony and put a dome here instead. Uh, this means the same amount of the same amount of food and stuff can go to the dome, but it will be a higher population limit. And actually, this is a level two colony even. So. Um, yeah, this level two colony is pumping out pretty good science, though. I don't know if we can deliver stuff there. I've deprioritized the colonies, so again, I do expect to see the population drop by doing that. But uh, it's about sustainability, and I also don't need them as much as the research, the main research that I needed to start this process is already done. Uh, so I can actually go ahead and break down all of this stuff here. I don't think I need the silicon mine anymore. We can get rid of this. I can get rid of this. And I'm just going to keep doing this. So I will be, uh, I'm just going to keep going and I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Also wanted to take a second, just, you know, in case I forget, I know I was looking for this earlier. Look at the, the nitrogen, uh, or the nitrate extractor, right? It's just like, <laughs> it's, it produces it pretty quick and it just like puffs it into the, uh, end of the atmosphere kind of cool uh from, from, from underneath right uh if you take a look at the top bar here you'll see that we got uh, o2 well over our requirements now uh, so we started that process now to 0.8 percent o2 we do want to keep this I, I think my target is going to be about 25 percent we'll see i want to keep, keep it around there if i can gives me a little bit of flexibility on the upside before things start to go south uh and then we need our CO2 to come way down in percentage, so we're going to introduce nitrogen to kick it up there. Uh, so anyway, that's that's the current process. Nitrogen has a, lot, a long time to go, but you'll see that these two things here, they're not both crossed out anymore because of the surface water. So once I get this up back to 400, it will, uh, I hope anyway, it will trigger the next directive, but... Uh, it's it's just it's slow because I decided to stop the whole process and go after these sites, which, you know, in hindsight, if I wanted to go back if I could go back, I would. Also, to the question of what happens to them, I don't know if you can finish these sites. Um, but when I leave the sites, the they stay. But I've already like I've already excavated them and gotten the the right out and all that stuff on them. I don't know if there is a way to complete them to where they go away. If there is, it takes a long time to do, and eventually I'll I'll find out that. But uh, for now, I can't. What's going on? Just out of range of power, huh? Sorry, we can fix that. Just out of range. This one's about to go, so we'll break this one down, and then we'll have just this water extractor here with... I think I, think I want another worker hub just to make sure this stays going, so... Okay, the water is creeping up on me a little bit faster than I wanted. Uh, we're at 175 now, and uh, it's it's kind of gotten this water extractor here, and it's starting to flood into here a little bit. It looks like the drones can actually still get there, at least for now. So I'm, uh, I'm I'm really hoping that they can do that. I, I mean, I'm not opposed to just having like little things sitting on the map, but I'd rather not have rubble, you know, just like icons for rubble sitting on the map. I'd like it to be nice and clean. So uh, we're going to hopefully get that taken care of. I'm starting to pull the resources that are near this water line off of there too, because this is rising. Um, we currently have 94.5% CO2, 3.2 millibars of O2, which equivalates to 1.2%. Uh, and then we've got uh, a little over 11 and a half millibars of nitrogen, which is about about 1. Point, uh, sorry, 4.3%. Uh, so that's that's happening. And again, this is going to start rising over time. Now we're going to see our temperature start to go up a little bit now as we make the atmosphere thicker. And um, of course, we also have. I want to show you guys the bio things that I laid down before, which I really have no idea where I laid them down. So I don't know where they are. They're probably just going to keep working without my consent at this point. Uh, yeah, I'll find him eventually, but uh, I wanted to show you guys those biodomes as well. Let me locate them in a second. I'll, 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 just give me a second. I'll locate them for you. All right. I found them right here. So these little biodomes are pretty cool, man. They look really cool. 
And these are just basically they're, they're just there as plant life that's sucking in uh, uh, CO2 and putting out oxygen. That's that's really their only purpose. So they're converting our atmosphere to be more oxygen rich. We are going to want to regulate that just a little bit. We're going to want to keep an eye on it. But uh, raising oxygen up, you know, 10% or so, whatever. And that's, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I think this oxygen release, because it's sucking down water, I think I can probably get rid of one of these. I'm going to scrap one of these because I don't think we need that many. I'll keep one running just for now, but I, I don't need this process to be going super fast because I do want to make sure I get all of my stuff broken down. If this stuff turns to rubble and we can't extract the resources off of it, then I just lose them, right? And again, most of this stuff is getting taken to the Hyperloop and like all these resources from Breakdown are getting taken to the Hyperloop and then sent over to storage units, which you know are, are near the Hyperloop. I probably should put another one over here too. Let's put another storage center like right here. And uh, just so they have enough uh, capacity to store it all. Uh, okay, going to keep going. See you in a second. So to help speed this process up a little bit, because, um, like, the water is coming out, right? We, we're starting to get water encroaching in our territory. All this, It's growing, right? Uh, so to speed this up, this is going to get scrapped right now, unfortunately, and it kind of sucks uh, because the water is, you know, it's, it's breaking it down. So uh, as soon as the water gets in here, it, it touches this and it says, hey, you're, uh, you're ti it's time to become rubble, right? So what I've got this happening right now is I've got them prioritized. This does two things for me. The first thing it does is it encourages the drones to prioritize removing resources from the output slot here. And that means it will constantly keep working. At least that's the idea. It does look like it sometimes does get full if the drones are particularly busy. But the idea is we're going to prioritize them taking the output out of this when it needs it. The second thing it does, though, is as soon as the water gets here and it turns it into scrap, it immediately prioritizes the destruction and removal of it so that my drones are more likely to get the resources from the building as opposed to letting them expire in the water. So the things that are really close to the water, like this one, unfortunately, the, the road is gone now. So if I wanted to get that, I could go like this. And I might be able to get those resources back because uh, there is some resources there. And just by doing this, I don't even have to build this. I can just I can just delay this. But the road is built, and that's the important thing. The, the drones can get to it now um, to get the resources off of it. And then uh, let's see what else. Uh, that's kind of it. I'm, I'm slowly removing all the structures that are kind of in danger of having water on them. I've got this one uh, prioritized big time. So that the drones will always remove stuff from the output because there's 1300 water here it's crazy we're at 192 millibars on this now so we are we're not gonna be able to get all this water and you know like that's that's okay i mean i could just sit here longer and get it maybe but what i'd rather do i think is get into sa6 because sa6 has another source of water right down here and if i can just get into this then it's it's kind of the same thing as exploiting you know, I've exploited most of this already. I've gotten, eh, okay, not most. I, I have a lot of extractors here that are like 80 left. Uh, this one's the 1300 one, but this one's expended now. We don't even need that one anymore. Um, this one's got 1200 left, but it's pretty far away from this. So um, but mostly I'm just trying to get as much water as I can while not being too slow on the process. I'm hoping not to get too slow on the process. Uh, are you guys going to get these resources or not? Here, let's go ahead and have this built. Because that will add another drone in this area that might just do it for us. Kind of hoping maybe that happens. Let's go. Break it down. Anyway, uh, I might slow it down too because it is it is going pretty fast. I, I kind of said this in a previous video. All I got to do is metaphorically flip a switch. I guess symbolically flip a switch. Nah, it's metaphor. I don't know what it is. Anyway. I just have to flip a switch, if you will, and all of a sudden, all that water comes back. It's going to be pretty quick. So maybe I will slow it down just a little bit. We'll be right back. Hey, I also wanted to chime in and uh, like share something else that I noticed with the game. It's kind of a problem with the game. This happens uh, has happened a couple of times. There's a couple of craters that are really close together, and they actually block each other so that neither one of them is usable. The same thing is true with these Lohitanga ruins. So there's two elements of, or there's two instances of Lohitanga ruins here. And if you were to take a research post and try to put one on it, notice how it highlights it. Uh, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see this. You can see how the research post actually highlights the other one saying that it blocks a resource. Uh, the same thing is true on this one. These two are 
blocking each other. You can't put one down uh, because of the other one. And it's uh, a little bit... It, it, it kind of sucks how they've done that. Um, I know it's probably one of those randomly placed sorts of things, but I don't know if there's any way that that could be prevented in the future. Now, you might think that this worker hub is the thing that's blocking them, but I placed this worker hub after I discovered this. Um, so it's it's not this. It's, um, it's Maybe it's close because I placed it there. But these two are blocking each other. And the same thing is true with there's two craters. I'll show you another instance here. So there's, these are two usable craters, right? And if we go to colonies, go to crater dome, you'll notice that these two are blocking resource. It's blocking another usable crater. And it, it, it won't allow you to use this because of that. Um, so you can kind of see how it's it's highlighting this one with the dashed circle, right? So it's, it's just kind of weird how it's done that. And uh, I don't necessarily uh, like that because you'll see these two sites and it's actually a nice spot for a dome, honestly, because um, we're moving this way towards the water. But uh, it, it is what it is. So like most of my, most of my domes and stuff are kind of way over here. And now the water is going to be way over here. So like having domes nearby over this area might be better. And uh, yeah, anyway, just something I noticed, wanted to chime in for that. I'm in year 59 now. And the water is coming in, man. It's coming right in. Magnetic dipole shield is complete. It says create a magnetic dipole to shield the planet from solar radiation. Magnetic dipole shield. Uh, so we'll look to, look to do that too. Uh, I think we'll just go ahead and import nitrogen from Titan. It's a really big research project. Uh, but it's one of the last big ones we really need to worry about. And then this water extractor can be taken down. Uh, I don't know if we're going to manage to get all of these. Eh, tough call. I have stopped all nitrogen, all oxygen, all CO2 production. So just same thing I had before. I've stopped all of it. But yet, despite stopping all of it, this number was it was going up. Now it might be going down. Uh, I want to make sure I get at least this um, because there's a lot of water there. And as these two dry up, as they're about to, the drone's attention will be applied to this one more often and we'll never have to worry about it filling up. This is another one too. But we really don't have to worry about it filling up anyway now at this point. We've gotten rid of a lot of the other structures that are nearby. So now when there's an output for this, they usually come by and get it like pretty close to right away. So it's never too full to operate. And I'm hoping that we see our water supply kind of go up. It is like it's just up and down. It's a, kind of a weird cycle how it does that. Like we're using it in bulk and then all of a sudden we're not. And then we are and then we're not. It's kind of weird. Uh, food and stuff is kind of the same way, although this here looks like it's in coinciding with population drop, perhaps, like when rockets arrive, but I don't know. In any case, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, I found a potential bug. Possibly an exploit. Not really sure what's going on here. Uh, I told the drones to... Maybe you can explain this because I, 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 don't, I don't have an answer for it. I told the drones to break down this building. This is a water extractor that had gone dry. It's zero. There was nothing left in it. Uh, so I said, break it down. And then something weird happened. The stockpile of water in its storage just keeps going up. And also chemicals are going... Uh, it's very weird. Uh, it's almost like they're using the rubble source as a storage which is not what i want them to do and um well uh the water keeps going up <laughs> i don't think it's ever gonna go away so i again this is an expired stockpile for water um i don't i don't think they're bringing it from here to here this is starting to stop now because they're all like focusing on this uh, so it's a little bit weird. I would like this to go away, but like I said, the stockpile of water, you can see, is also chemicals. It just keeps going up instead of down. It's like they're not actually taking it away. Uh, real weird. Uh, so I've broken most of this stuff down. I just have to get rid of all of these now. So let's break those down too. And uh, we're moving away from this water source. We're backing out slowly but surely. We're going to start breaking down this stuff too. Uh, the drones, I have tons of drone hubs in the area because, you know, drones, they kind of stay in the area near their hubs. So I figured I could probably get these things prioritized and get the resources faster if, you know, I put a bunch of drone hubs in the, in the way. And then, of course, break down the drone hubs as we move back. But, uh, like, it's... It's not working out the way I anticipated. 
This mine is done, but it's like a connection point to all of this. But I don't think it's necessary to connect all this, to be honest. Because we've got... This is what we've got the Hyperloops for. And actually, I wonder if this can connect here. Not quite to that one, no. But I mean, this Hyperloop is going to here and then to there. So if they, they want to move through here, they can just take the Hyperloop instead of taking this long path uh, this direction. So whatever. So we'll, we'll break this down. See, when they break it down, the resources that make it up go into a stockpile and then the drones have to remove the stuff from the stockpile right and then once all the stuff is out of the stockpile that is when the structure officially gets removed and the paths reevaluated or, or deleted or whatever right and so we're going to see the silicon mine disappear and everything is nice and clean and there's no more silicon in it right that's what i want to happen here But they have 187 water here now. And chemicals, too. They're just bringing it here. I suspect... Hang on. I might be able to fix this. I suspect this has to do with drone hub range. So, like, the, the hubs... The drones can't move it any further, like, to get to the Hyperloop. So, they're just bringing it here. And then they're expecting someone else to come and get it and bring it to the Hyperloop. So, perhaps we can go like this. Add a couple more drones in the area. And maybe by doing that, we'll start seeing this thing get cleared away. That's a really weird problem. I guess I'm not going to call it an exploit. Because it's it's kind of clear that they're bringing the water from the other mines and collecting it all right here. I don't want them to do that. I want them to bring it to the Hyperloop and get it the hell out of here and bring it somewhere else. right? But I, I suspect that might be what it is. They're just bringing it here as sort of like a central storage place. Also, uh, I can't slow it down. I've stopped all terraforming efforts now. Uh, I have for a long time, and this number does go up. And as you can see, uh, oxygen is also going up. The temperature is getting slight. It's, it's kind of hanging around. It's not really getting all that much warmer, um, but it, it is slightly warmer. But this, it's all going up anyway. So I suspect that I will not be able to get all of this water. It's a thousand water I won't be able to get here, I think. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with just drones all of a sudden not wanting to go through this. Had I known this would happen, I would have just left it as a zero mine, of course. But I, I didn't know that that was going to happen that way. So hopefully this gets worked out once the worker hubs get built. Uh, we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Okay, yeah. So that does seem to be the case. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of little buddies here moving the water to the Hyperloop. And uh, the stockpile of water is going down very, very fast. So that's good. Uh, it has, it, once this was built, that whole thing started to come together. Uh, I think I'm going to let this drone hub complete just so we have another drone hub in the area for this extractor. I'm, again, I'm really hoping this extractor can get more water out, but it's all about what the drones are going to do, right? They got to get here to get it out of this. And I can't tell them to prioritize this building any more than I already have. I guess unless I do this. Perhaps that will do it. Yeah, okay, that does it. Fair enough. Uh, I guess I, I can't prioritize any more than just hitting priority, but I guess I can deprioritize this. And uh, hopefully we'll get this down to like zero or so. I don't really want to micromanage it per se. Um, but I mean, I kind of am. This whole breakdown process is a big micromanagement fest. Some of these things are not complete yet, like this chemicals. So there's still 54 here. There's still 638 aluminum here, but I mean, there was like over 2,000 aluminum in that, so I got a whole bunch. Um, we're not going to exploit those nitrates. Uh, yeah, so uh, this, this water deposit here has only got 219 left in it. And we're starting to break down some of these worker hubs. And we've sort of rebuilt them. This is where I, why I said as we move back, we have to build more hubs as we uh, as we go back. Because when you delete the hubs, you're also removing workers in the area. And you're going to find that these things will break down slower as you pull them back. So you have to sort of like replace the hubs all the way back. And it's a little bit tedious. But um, I think in the end, it'll be worth it. Once we have as much water out of this area as possible, I think in the end, it'll be worth it. Notice our, our uh, population has dropped a lot. And our research now is only 320 instead of being over 1,200 or so. Um, so, like, we're losing a lot of people with this because I'm so focused on this area. And, uh, of course, food's not being really made. I mean, I don't want it to go towards manufacturing 
coins. I don't think you do anything else with food. But if I was to delegate water towards food production even more, like I go about like this, just really crank up the food. We'll do nothing for oxygen release. We'll, we'll see what that does. I, I don't think it's going to do much of anything because at the end of the day, we're pretty limited. And uh, at, at this point, though, I, I do think it's going to stabilize because our ability to create food is at a certain level. And if the population is over that level, the population will come down until we reach the level, right? That's sort of how that works. So eventually we'll stop losing colonists and it will sort of stabilize. Um, yeah, it looks like there's 6,100 new arrivals. <laughs> Good luck getting in here. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is barely out of the water right now. And um, it does look like maybe the amount of liquid water is coming down. Possibly. We're almost 5% oxygen now. We do want to watch that. And we're going to have to start maybe producing more CO2 in a second to start offsetting that a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's the delicate balance. You don't want to let oxygen get out of control. So you pump out the other two and sort of try to get that percentage down. It's not about the amount per se, it's the percentage. And then eventually it just sort of. Uh, you're, by doing that, though, of course, pumping more CO2 in, I, I'm going to raise. Like, this is going to raise the water level. We're going to make the place warmer, and that's just the natural course of things. So, uh, I want to get as much out of this water extractor as I can. This is almost emptied. They've moved every resource out of here except water, pretty much. So, it's all a matter of time now as the, the last hub gets built. Yeah, we'll have another worker in the area now. Yeah. All right, I'm going to keep going on this. I'm moving these guys back. Again, the, the, the really dark part is where we want to move people out first. Uh, move the, the structures out of first. It's these really dark areas. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and start breaking these down now, too. To get these uh, get these going. Because, like I said, at this point, I can't stop it. It's going to keep getting warmer. You can see it's getting warmer from the last time we cut. It's going to keep... I have everything off right now, and it doesn't matter. Once we start getting nitrogen pumped in... The thickness of the atmosphere is going to create that natural greenhouse effect. And at that point, you can't stop it. So um, before, I was able to stop it because I, I think we weren't quite at the point of no return yet. Thankfully, um, I was able to get a whole lot of research out of that. And again, it doesn't matter if my re if my population drops for the food. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that we're able to get this, the research for it, right? And like, there's a, still a lot in biotech I'd like to do. But... As soon as we, I think, anyway, as soon as we get this to over 400, we'll activate the next part of the story. And perhaps then we can get into SA6. We have a whole bunch of water accessible there. Um, and we're already pretty much set up to transport it rapidly because my uh, Hyperloop is right here. And we can even pop another landing site down over here if we want to as well. Probably over in this area right here. I believe the, uh, yeah, the water is right here. So there's, uh, it's not completely in bounds. If I was to go to the landing site overlay, that water is not completely in bounds, right? You can kind of see how we're, I'm hoping that I can access it, but I won't know the resources that are here that I've scanned until I unlock the sector. And then I'll be able to see what resources are here for me to exploit. And hopefully there's at least like five or six really solid uh, water sources on this side of the sector. Um, and I'm hoping there's, if there is any type of military action that we need to take, in SA6, um, I mean, I have a tons of drones. I have over 2,000 drones, combat drones, and I have more than enough resources to just pump out a whole bunch more. Um, and then I, I should have, I think, like a forward, not a, not an assault drone factory, but like a drone hive. Probably have a forward-facing, I guess this is our forward base, if you will, for the drone hive. We'll put it like right here. And then we can have a whole bunch of like our army stationed right here ready to intercept if, if need be so yeah a couple of these water extractors finally this one's done i can then pull this entire area out now that's what i was waiting for is all that water so we'll just start breaking down all this stuff um all the stuff that's like on the side here and just just start queuing it all for demolition we don't need it anymore pull it all back this worker hub can get pulled back now and then this one so i'm just gonna keep doing it i'll be right back all this effort. Oh, no. No. <laughs> all this effort. And it's done. That's it. That's all I can get. The water has just come into here. And, uh, I mean, we got a whole bunch of it. But, oh, there's so much left on the table, metaphorically speaking, there. It is, uh, 
It's unfortunate. And we pumped a lot of water, like so much water. There's just not enough in the game. They need to make a way to use the water that's coming in because otherwise you got to get more sources of water to, to pump. That's another thing that needs to happen. You just need to give me more water. Um, another way, you know, to, to, to make water would be nice. I'm also noticing some different coloration here. Look at this. This is all very different color now, huh? Look at that. It's like, uh, you know, like something might be, uh, something might possibly be growing here soon. I don't know. Maybe. A little discoloration in the, in the soil there. All right, let's go ahead and break that down. And unfortunately, that is the end of our water in this area. We're going to leave 882 water behind. Uh, luckily, this one's done. Got all of it out of that one. This one's still got a little bit of time left, right, to pump out the water. 574 as we uh, pull everything back here. And I'm going to try to get some worker hubs on this side of it just so that we don't lose worker hubs in the area. Just sort of pull this back. Right, replacing the ones that we're breaking down up here. And then we're going to have to, hopefully, I think we're going to have to get the Hyperloop to break down too. And that's a little bit, that's something that takes a little bit of time sometimes. Uh, in this case, it's not going to take that much time because there's not a whole lot in the stockpile. But a lot of times you'll have a lot of like, stuff in storage in the Hyperloop. So it takes a little bit of time to break it down. Uh, can we get this out of here before that's underwater, please, guys? Uh, this one here is being broken down, too. I think we could probably remove that one. And then this Hyperloop, I think, needs to go. I've been breaking down these aluminum mines, too. We'll break both of those down. Just sort of trying to pull it back. As the water comes, we pull back with it, you know? Uh, yeah, so this is, this is what we're doing today. <laughs> this is my day. This is uh, this is about three hours of gameplay for me today. Hope you're uh, hope you're having a good time. <laughs> this is just the way. I mean, you don't have to play it the way I do, of course. You can do definitely do this a different way. Um, you know, you could you could just do all of these sites before even starting terraforming. But I wanted to see it terraformed, and I wanted to read the descriptions of a lot of these sites. So, in any case, uh, I will be right back. All right, general update, as it's been uh, quite a few years now, as we've been uh, playing at 16 times speed for a bit. Uh, I'm noticing oxygen going up pretty fast. We're at 11%, and uh, nitrogen's up at 8.2%. We're kind of starting to really ramp up nitrogen to kind of meet up with oxygen. And I've dropped a couple of these uh, carbonate extractors to help with the CO2 generation as well, uh, because Oxygen ra raises very quickly. You have to combat that, and you have to make sure that you don't get too much of it. So the problem with this, though, is that by doing that, we are accelerating the water. So I am now I'm in full-on pullback mode, trying to get my entire operation to be on uh, area that is not floodable area. And uh, that means pulling back on a lot of these resources, uh, unfortunately. It looks like I'm actually... I left a bit of a maintenance gap here, but... To be honest, I, I kind of don't care about 383 carbon. I got plenty of carbon I can access. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that down. Uh, of course, the hyperloops that were over here have been disassembled as well. There's a couple over here still. We're going to start pulling these back, worker hubs, etc. And I think we just probably just start pulling everything back here. If it's unpowered now, it comes, it gets broken down. And I'm just going to keep doing this until the next video. So this is full on, uh, I guess, deconstruct mode. To prepare for this and i think when we come back with the next one i don't know how long this video is because i keep popping in and out so i normally if i if i do it all in one recording or two recordings it's it's pretty easy to tell sort of how long my video is and i, I know when to end it but i have no idea how long this one is so i'm gonna call it here and um I, there is going to be this nitrogen from titan thing this is this is gonna get done where is this? Right uh, here. This is going to get done. And I won't necessarily be able to like time that to where I just start recording again when that thing's up. But um, she has... Amy's chimed in and she said something about, um, you know, we only need a small amount of nitrogen from Titan. I'm sure everyone there won't mind. <laughs> so uh, we, we've got, you know, we've got that coming in for us too. And then after that, the only real stuff that matters i guess is in the biotech tree 
for me. The military tree so far doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I imagine there will be a need for stuff like this, but um, if our if our research is entirely focused on only on military and we have access to everything else, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm all right with that. Military is for me in this game at least, uh, especially with how slow we're kind of playing it right now with. You know, trying to get all these different resources, spots and stuff. This is the problem with the balance of the game. So I have balance, not the right word. This is the problem with the experience of playing this game for long periods of time. Especially mid-game and late game. Especially, you are out of water. You're, you're just going to be out of water. Notice how I have no food. I have basically no water. This has nothing to do with building prioritization. It has everything to do with just simply having no sources to extract it. And that's just the way it is. I've pulled my oxygen pumping machine. That's gone. Uh, I'm also gonna take down these greenhouse gas factories. I'm not necessarily gonna need those, I don't think. Uh, I may need to combat these biodomes if I ever turn them on. Definitely built way too many of them. Didn't need to build this many. But we can turn them on later. If oxygen starts to fall too low, we can turn them back, turn them back on. Um, but I, I really don't know if I need these. Although they do take, they take chemicals. I have a pretty stable supply of that. But water is not meaning demand at all. And the demand isn't that high because we just simply aren't making any food. It's just it's just really difficult to get any water right now. And that's the problem with the game. You need to be able to use water that's on the surface. When you start terraforming and you bring water into the map and you completely invalidate the resources on a huge portion of your, especially your starting location too, um, you have to be able to counter that by being giving us technologies that allow us to use surface water, convert it to usable water. That just simply has to be a thing, guys. Um, it, it, that's that's my opinion on it if anybody who is a, on the development team is watching this there is just i don't know what your reason is for not incorporating the simple technologies that we have embraced on earth for 100 years i i don't know what your logic is on that um but it i i implore you <laughs> i i beg of you change your mind on that if you could because otherwise uh you know a lot of the critics uh, they have a point it's it's very it, having played this for about two hours right now to, to make this video about two and a half hours to make, to make this video um yeah i can definitely see their point because i should not be afraid of water coming in it should be a good thing that water comes in and if i was still in full-on oh my gosh i need technology mode yeah water not being able to use it when it's right here it's a big problem. It's it's like I I it, like think about the logic in this. I'm unable to get 882 water. I'm unable to use water because it's covered by water. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave this here. Again, I don't know how long this video is, but I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna keep rocking on this. I'm gonna pull everything back. When we start the next video, we probably will have all of this stuff pulled back on land. Um, and maybe not. It's possible. I will start the video again. I will do the next video if this reaches 400 and our new directive shows up. Um, so I absolutely will be keeping an eye on that. And there is no stopping it now. There's no way to reverse this at this point. Um, with nitrogen being introduced, the, the, the greenhouse effect on our atmosphere is just, yeah, the, the pressure is too high. There's no, way to, there's no way to take it back now. So um, thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And we're going to start seeing green on Mars very soon now. Take care. We'll see you. Bye.